my cocoon friend hatched. How cool is that? Maybe we all just want to be bugs taking naps on marigolds. refrigerator pickles waiting for tomorrow. Get him, Rand. <laughs> Good boy. Compost is extremely full. So, we're going to hear a lot of summer. Okay. And maybe it will rain got some storms brewing out so the compost is really freaking full and I have the cardboard that I used um as like a placemat for planting some of those tomato and pepper seeds just wrapped that up and spilt half of course half the dirt instead of being careful in a layer with the cardboard that I used in a very full compost even Eating lots of fresh fruits and vegetables. Very wet in here. So just put in the green. Mixed it, I mixed it up a little from some weeds I pulled. Oh my god, that's so heavy. Ah, yay. Yummy. Okay, so this is what it looks like after. Ideally, I would like these smaller because the smaller pieces of cardboard are uh, easier to break down. Like anytime I put anything like stems and stuff, I'm gonna be cutting that. And my really, it's ugly compost pile, you know, and like you can see there's like mac and cheese boxes. And there's a lot of talk out there about, you know, not composting things like that. But here's the thing, you know, with um, the, I guess, commonly held belief that you shouldn't compost um, cardboards with dyes. I've seen it being broken down. And like, yes, is the dye going into that? I mean, I guess, but we are going to have a sustainable practice. We need to make things evolve to clean up some of this mess, right? Like, um, I'll put it in a video, but there is a fungus that's recently been discovered that I think it's like a fungus they already knew existed. But anyway, it's evolved to be able to break down plastic, right? So like, this is something that is evolving to clean up just, you know, on its own. And so why not, you know, help all the other things do that too, you know? Um, while I'm waiting for the pickle brine to cool off, I'm going to start my next round of seeds for summer.
that I'm gonna put in later this month. Going back to two of those things that I mentioned earlier, the first being um, cardboard um, or rather colored cardboard or dyed cardboard not being able to be composted. I really couldn't find anything. Um, anything that I could find that explained um, that, it didn't say why. Like I, uh, finding the why behind that was difficult and then I found this one page, um, allotmentgardening.org that said, um, basically all cardboard and paper can be used in the compost heap or the garden, but some shiny cardboard and paper does take longer to break down, which I've found to be true. Does it mean it can't or it's bad? It just takes longer. And, um, uh, the shiny surface used to be made um, using kaolin, a natural clay material. Um, and there's no evidence that I'm aware of that a shiny card will do any harm in a compost heat, but I don't like the idea of adding a possibly harmful plastic to the environment. So that's this person's opinion here. Um, and it says colored matte cardboard or paper can be used. There used to be concerns about the inks used in the past, but these fears seem to have been groundless. Again, um, not sure what or why. I mean, if you, you know, have some sort of thing, I do take off the tape and um, stickers and things like that off of stuff because I know those won't break down. In fact, I've accidentally found things accidentally put in there like, uh, produce stickers on like avocado shells and things like that. I shared um, three different articles. This first one I shared a screenshot of was the um, from earth.org about a study done by Yale University students that found um, Pestilotiopsis uh, um, which is a fungal um a fungus from the rainforest of Ecuador. Um, it not only ate plastics, but it thrives in oxygen starved environments like landfills. Um, and then additionally, these other things that I shared, um, these two common fungi, um, specifically, you know, just thunder from the thunderstorm rolling in, um, these two specifically feed on, um, polypropylene which um, makes up, I found this interesting that it makes up 20% of the world's plastic waste, but it's only 1% of what is recycled. So that's a third of what is produced um, and in plastic waste, only 1% of it is being recycled. Um, and so these two, um, Aspergillus uh, terius and Angiodontium album were able to break down polypropylene after it had been treated, pre-treated with either UV light or heat, reducing the plastic by 21% over 30 days, um, and by 25 to 27% over 90 days. So it eats about a quarter of it in three months. This is astounding. This is something that's typically thought of to be not something that doesn't break down, right? Um, and then finally, this one talked about um, over 184 fungal and 55 bacteria species um, that are thriving on what's known as a plastosphere, um, which is like a basically a plastic um, floating island, right? There's a bunch of them all over the world. And these fungal strains and bacteria strains have found a way to go on and live and in fact use it as an ample food source um so just absolutely amazing and we have to do this because look at this there's 400 million tons of plastic waste produced annually um 
I don't know, it doesn't really say if this is a specific world uh, country doing this or if this is the whole world, but that is astounding. That's astounding. So um, we need to be able to have things that break this down. And it seems like uh, Mother Nature is doing that on her own in a lot of ways because we aren't doing enough, right? Um, anyway, just thought I would share that. And I'll put links to those sources in the uh, description below. Thanks for watching.